I want to welcome Michael Batista here. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit today about co-wholesaling or joint venture wholesaling, JV wholesaling. Um, it's also been called by some others as mobile wholesaling or <laughs> I don't know, maybe a variety of other things. That's kind of what the real estate industry is like. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, sometimes um, a coach or somebody will just invent an, a, a new name for it. So I want to talk a little bit today about co-wholesaling or joint venture wholesaling and in reference to pretty houses as well as ugly houses. And my objectives for us today are to one, explain the power of joint venture wholesaling and lease options. This has really made a huge, huge difference in my life, guys. My business is has really, really been important for me. Okay, co-wholesaling has. Number two, I want to talk about the two types of joint venture structures. Three, I want to give you a joint venture agreement that you can use for all your JV deals. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have one already. If you do, that's great. But here's one that I use. I got this out of the investment banker industry that I was in. Okay. Because they always had to have these non-disclosure, non uh, these confidentiality, non-compete, non, you know, everything. So there's like all the I's and all the T's, you know. So I, I pulled this out of that industry when I left there and kind of changed it up and catered it towards real estate a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to present that to you, let you have that if you want to use that. Number four, I want to talk about how to find JV partners with rent to own deals <clears throat> and JV partners with ugly house deals. You could do this with both guys. It's not limited to one or the other. And I also want to give you a tracker spreadsheet and a script for calling JV partner prospects. Okay. I'm going to provide all that to you. I'm going to put a link in the, the VIP today. And after the session's over, you can go access all this stuff. And last but not least, number five, I want to show you my marketing process to help you build a master disposition side where you can find tenant buyers or cash buyers anywhere. Okay. Primarily using Facebook and Craigslist. <laughs> All right. Um, also automated REI. We're going to talk about that today because we have uh, Michael Batista here in the room with us. So let's, let's jump right in and uh, uh, let me see here. I got to let Jamie in the room. He's wanting in. We got a good, good group here today. Um, let's let's open this up, guys. Unmute your microphones and let's talk for a second about what is a joint venture. What is a joint venture? Does anybody have any ideas? Define joint venture. Let's open it up. Anybody want to participate? You're more than welcome. What is a joint venture? I'll, I'll write down the definition here as you tell me. Uh, a business partnership. Yeah, a business partnership. Two or more people, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. They let's say they combine resources, or or maybe it's not resources. Maybe it's skills. Okay, and they're going to do that to execute some kind of project. Okay. In in our particular case, um, real estate wholesaling, co-wholesaling. or joint venture wholesaling. Okay. That's where two or more people combine resources and skills to execute a property deal. Okay. In other words, one JV partner is bringing a property deal. Okay. And the other JV partner is bringing the buyer. If it's an ugly house deal, cash buyer as flip fix and flipper or a landlord or a tenant buyer, if it's a pretty house deal or something like this, okay? So you can do this on pretty house or ugly house. It doesn't matter. So these are the two or more people that have to combine in order to do a real estate coho sale or joint venture. Now, you might be the guy that has the property deal. And if that's you, great. All right. If you are not that 
guy or gal, then you're going to need to be the JV partner with the buyer or the tenant buyer or know how to find the buyers or tenant buyers. Okay, this is not a skill that all wholesalers know. Okay, I guarantee you that if you just took the time to really develop out your disposition side of your business, finding, locating, qualifying buyers or tenant buyers, placing them, you, you will be able to be successful in, in real estate wholesaling. There are so many deals under contract right now by you, by me, by them, him, her, they, every other group. They're all over Facebook. They're all over Instagram. They're all over Twitter. They're all over websites everywhere, all over Craigslist, all over Facebook Marketplace. These are all deals that need what? A buyer. So if you have a master ninja disposition side, the, the possibilities are endless, okay? My business is diverse. I do coho selling. I do lease options. I do some straight ugly house stuff from time to time, okay? But there are some business models of wholesalers who have completely built out this entire JV wholesaling, pretty house and ugly house, concept they built it out and one of them is keegley you guys ever, ever heard of keegley michael batista how many deals is keegley doing in a month coho sale 60 to 80 consistently and they're they're in uh they're only in like 11 markets wow you know so i mean that's that's like they can do deals in any any of the top you know, 200 markets in the U S but they focus primarily on, uh, on like 11 major markets. I couldn't name what those are, but those, uh, those 11 markets, um, probably are 70%, 80% of what they do. Okay. So the opportunities are endless really, basically. Um, uh, it, yeah. it seems like to me, um, that's an example. I, I can give you examples from my own career where well let's just uh let's skip to a different page here i want to pull up a, a a different page and let you take a look at that too while we're at it uh we just talked about what is a joint venture let's talk about um why joint venture why joint venture what's some good what's some good reasons why we would want a joint venture now i know we just talked about keely doing 60 to 80 deals a month uh, a month <laughs> right? I'm not a year. Okay. That would be, that would be more like me. Okay. But they're doing 60 to 80 a month. Okay. <laughs> That's big time monster size. Can you imagine what it would be like for you just as a one man show, a uh, solopreneur to do one or two deals? Oh, there, you go. there you go. That covers your nut right there. All right. Uh, let's, what are, what are some good reasons why other than what we've talked about here that joint venturing or co-wholesaling is a great idea. You save money on uh, marketing for inventory. Yeah. Right. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Save money on seller side costs. Yeah. What, what and, and marketing, right. To be, to be more specific. What's another good one. Anybody have any thoughts? Bypass all the seller headaches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> let's see here how about that on the buy side can i say something yeah you may have a, a group of committed buyers so you don't have to go around looking for them over and over again but on the seller side then the other person has to keep coming up with deals you don't have to on the buyer side yeah yeah, exactly. So you're just easier working one deals. side. Easier oh, to get deals. Yeah, basically easier to get deals for her. So yeah. yeah. Easier to close deals. There you go. Okay. Why is it uh, easier? Because because they have they have half the job done already. Um, 
uh, here's what here's one thing I think is a big one for me. Mm-hmm. Speed to the money. <laughs> like word to your mother. Speed to the money. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell you this, uh, how many times this has happened to me, guys. Been in a tight spot. You guys know I get in tight spots too? Shit. You know? Mo money, mo problems. You know? Uh, mo deals, mo problems. All right? You got to, the busier you are, the m- more stuff you got to handle, you got to deal with. You know, you make bad choices sometimes too. You buy things you shouldn't buy. You do stupid shit. I, you know? I, I'm human. Been in a pinch. Even as a successful real estate investor, beforehand, definitely. Uh, I can't tell you how many times a wholesale deal has come across my desk. I've called the guy and said, hey, I'm a wholesaler too. I think I have a buyer I can put in with this deal. Would you be interested in joint venturing with me? You got the property deal. I got the buyer. Let's split the fee 50-50. Can we go ahead and talk about that or, or probably not? Boom. The deal comes together. Next thing you know, my buyer, I send it out to my list. My buyer is ready to buy cash money in seven to 10 days. That means in seven to 10 days, I go from being zero to being hero. (laughs) Speed to the money. Mm -hmm. Speed to the money. Okay. Um, What's another good reason? How about that? Education from a more experienced partner. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I've pulled out in my in my career. I pulled out a lot of gold nuggets from other other wholesalers. How yeah. about this? Um, if it's your first deal. Why joint venture? Well, if it's your first deal, what do you think, guys? Well, if it's your first deal, instead of wearing the marketing hat to get leads and then taking the marketing hat off and then putting on another hat that's pre-qualification caller and then taking that hat off and then picking up another hat and being, I'm going to close the call. I'm a call, you know, closer call now. Uh, okay, now I got the deal. Now I'm going to be the paperwork guy. I got to get the contract ready to send it over. Okay, now I got to make sure the admin stuff's done. Okay, take the admin hat off. Now I got to put the marketing hat back on and market this property contract deal here. Okay, mm-hmm. then then I got to take that off and I got to put the pre-qual back on. I got to pre-qualify. <sighs> it's your first deal. Maybe you want to chunk it down. Do half of it create an awesome disposition side. That's where I really got started. This is when my business really started taking off. One, because I first, I I started for the first time ever in my career, realizing that the disposition side was all about my customer, the customer, the guy with the money. And that changed my business forever. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the two types of anybody else have any ideas of why we might, Want a joint venture? Anything we can add to this? Time. Time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose uh, lack of time. Yeah, yeah. A lack of time. And if you have a job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. It's easier, to, easier to train an assistant as well just to do that side of it versus the whole thing. Oh, Definitely. Definitely easier to train up. Yeah. Build your business one piece at a time. That's excellent. Excellent ideas. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this types of joint ventures here. Types of joint ventures. There are two types of joint ventures that I want you to know about here today. And that is one's called a profit share. All right. um, JV. And that's where, you're sharing the profits. So let's say the, the assignment fee, the non-refundable option fee, however, whichever, whatever it ends up being, one party takes 50% and the other party takes 50%. Okay. 
maybe it's 60, 40. I've done a lot of JV deals at 60, 40 where I kept the 40 and they got the 60. That's okay. I, I would have got zero, but I got 40. It's not bad. What I do, I made a phone call. I sent an email blast out to my cash buyers list. I put an ad on Facebook marketplace. I put an ad on Craigslist. So what big deal for 40%. Wow. We absolutely. So there's profit share JV. And then there is what I like to call a fixed share JV, which is I'm going to joint venture with my JV partner here and whatever I make in option fee, regardless if it's 10,000 or if it's 20,000, I'm going to make a flat fee. Okay. I started out doing this at a thousand dollars a pop, believe it or not. When I was brand new, I had no deals in the pipeline. I started to joint venture. Okay. I, I worked and developed my disposition side, how to put marketing together for property deals, building a cash buyers list, building, you know, the ability to find and, and qualify tenant buyers, things like this. I built this out. And then I let every wholesaler in my area know, and I, and I wanted to develop a relationship with every one of them. And I said, when you find a deal that you don't have a buyer for, you bring it to me. We'll joint venture and I'll, and I'll get it sold. You know what? They started bringing deals to me on the regular, <laughs> on the regular. Yeah. Because I had that disposition side jumping. I only charged a thousand dollars to place a buyer. Stupid, stupid. I started out as a fixed share JV partner. I later learned by listening to my buyers, actually, they told me you're dumb. You could make way more money. Why don't you go jump in on this and like everybody else and, and get part of the assignment fee or, or ask for more. I was like, okay, I will. I, I went from making a thousand dollars to 14,000. Okay, so the fixed share JV, I don't recommend it, but the profit share JV, I do recommend. Now, I recommend a 50-50, but it doesn't always have to be 50-50, okay? I've got a joint venture agreement that I want to share with you, and I'm going to make it available here at the end of our session today, but... What I want to do is I want to stop sharing this screen and I want to talk about how you can go about finding, okay, how do you find JV partners to do deals with? Well, I think we can think of a few, I think we can think of a few, um, a, a few ways here today. One that pops into my mind is this club right here, <laughs> this club right here, talking to people in this club, finding out what they need, okay, finding out what they got, finding out what their strengths are, finding out what their weaknesses are, and then if you have the difference, plug in, okay? The VIP club is a great way to find joint venture deals, all right? Um I don't think anybody in here really is taking as much advantage of that as they should, but you should be joint venturing with one another. That's what this club was designed for. When I invented this club, I invented it originally with the intent of finding joint venture partners or helping create my own joint venture partners. And now it's so large, I can't do I can't do the joint venture stuff with you guys because there's too many of you. Okay. I'm not Keegley. I'm not doing 60 to 80 deals a month. Okay. <laughs> I don't even want to, I've got a different calling on my life. All right. So um, Greg wants to know, do I get a signed agreement with the wholesaler or compensation before you go get the buyer? Okay. Yeah. If it's a cash, if it's a cash money kind of deal, discounted ugly house, it's your buyer is going to be a fix and flipper or it's going to be a landlord. If it's a pretty house deal, you're going to have to find a tenant buyer. But before you go out looking for the deal, the, the tenant buyer or the, the cash buyer, 
Okay, before you go out looking for them, you better have an agreement with that wholesaler. All right, I'm gonna provide you that agreement in a little instructional video on how to fill it out. Okay, I'll, I'll provide that after this session is over. I just don't wanna bore you with me going through the agreement, but it, it it's pretty simple. It's like a one, two page kind of thing. And uh, you can set it up for a long time or you can set it up per deal, all right? But a joint venture agreement you should have in place before you start marketing properties or property contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great question, Greg. Um, how do you find JV partners with deals? How do you find them? Anybody got ideas? Let's talk here. Real estate Facebook groups. Craigslist. Okay. Facebook groups. Craigslist. Okay. Facebook groups. Somebody tell me more about that. Let's talk more about Facebook groups. Anybody, uh, anybody have any hot tips on how to find deals in Facebook groups? They're literally. Anybody that, anybody that posts a deal is a potential JV. If they got a deal under contract and you have a buyer. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Craigslist. Um, let's, let's show you exactly what we were doing last night in the VIP. Um, I got all this stuff in the way, man, these videos and the menu bar, it all gets in the way of my, my screen. So it's like share a screen. You can't see. Okay. <laughs> let's look at Craigslist here. We were doing this last night in the VIP session, but, but, Michael Batista showed us here. You go to real estate for sale. This is just Craigslist in Kansas City. You can go to your, your major market area or wherever you're at. Go to real estate for sale. Okay. Uh, now up here, you see where at the top, there's these three pull down menus where it says real estate for sale. You can click that and you can go down to, hold on, I got to move the videos again. Real estate Wanted real estate. Okay. Now check this out. Look at all these ads that have been placed by wholesalers. Okay. It's crazy. This is just in my market. Now, some of these, of course, are duplicates from the same wholesaler, but not all of them. There's a number of wholesalers here in, in Kansas City doing their thing. Okay, now that's a free way to find wholesalers. You could literally build out your disposition side, get your get your JV agreement together, like we know what you're doing with it, and then get here on Craigslist and pull up loads of wholesalers pretty much every day. <laughs> pretty much every day, right? And make some phone calls. Absolutely. What's your thoughts on that, guys? Anybody have any thoughts on this so far? That's, that's, that's real nice right there. That's pretty slick, huh? Justin? It is. What do you have to say, Ryan? You have Ryan was going to say something, I think? <laughs> um, I'm going to be I'm going to be all negative today. I mean, I have a few questions for that. Uh, okay. You know, like for my area, for example, you know, there's a two, three big time wholesalers here that they do GVs with others. And one of them, I think in May, he's, he had 22 contracts, JVs all, all together, JVs. Yeah. How you go beat these guys around? I mean, because they got buyers. I mean, probably every buyer in town on their list. Yeah. Well, let me just share this with you. Um, I'm, I'm a wholesaler a professional wholesaler in kansas city okay um i do co-wholesaling here on a regular basis and yet somehow <clears throat> there are always new people that i run across that i've never done a deal with never even heard of that have property deals under contract here okay um i also find deals myself 
as a professional wholesaler that I don't have a buyer for. Okay. <laughs> so the, the competition is not as fierce as you might think. Huh? Let me, let me explain it this way. When I get a deal under contract as a professional wholesaler, I will immediately send it out to my cash buyers list. In the first 10 minutes, if it's a deal, it's sold. Okay. If I don't sell it in the first 10 minutes, I'll wait. Usually a couple, two or three people will hit me up from the list and they'll say, Hey, does it have a new roof? What does it need new windows? You know, they'll have some questions. These are the tire kickers. So it didn't get scooped up immediately, but now I got a couple tire kickers. Maybe I'll sell it to one of them. Chances are probably not. So then I'm forced with a question. What do I do? Okay. I immediately go into the default mode, which I'm going to share with you what my default mode is here in just a few minutes. And I'll start marketing that property deal on Facebook and Craigslist. Facebook marketplace, Facebook paid ads. Okay. I'm looking for a buyer. I need a buyer. When raw ed calls me and says, Hey, I think I might be able to produce a buyer for you for this property deal. Would you be interested in a joint venture? The only logical answer I have is yes. I'd be interested in that. Cause I didn't produce a buyer myself yet. And as every day goes by, my motivation increases because my time is running out. I've only got this under contract for two weeks, for a month. Okay. So I need time is of the essence for me. So I, I don't, I don't think competition is going to be a real factor for you, even though there's a lot of deals being done coho sale. Absolutely. There's some big time guys out there. Those big guys Remember, big companies are often less efficient than you. Okay, don't be, don't be afraid of the big fish. They're slow. They're dangerous, but they're slow. Yeah, another issue, maybe you come uh, across the same buyers sometime. If they ran it and they couldn't sell it, then you want to run it to your buyers and they come across the same buyers. Oh, yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. And it pisses off my JV partner but I don't care. I'll laugh about it. Yeah, that's fine. The guy will say, I'll say, Hey, I got a buyer for this. I'm ready for the assignment agreement. Let's send it over. He's like, what's the guy's name? I'm like, the name, the name is Jerry Smith. Oh my God, Jerry. Oh, I'm going to kick Jerry's ass. Jerry's my buyer. I've been talking to Jerry for six months. I even showed him three properties and now he's buying this deal from you. Yeah, man. Sorry. It happens. You know, you got to really work on your dispositions. You love, you know, and then, and we just disconnected with Jerry. So that's how it works. You follow me? That's how, you know, so I pissed him off. Now he's mad a little bit at me. He's mad a little bit at Jerry, but it's okay. We're both making money. All right. It happens. I've had that happen. Exactly. I, word for word coming out of the other wholesaler. <laughs> I can't believe Jerry did that. Oh my gosh. Jerry, I've been talking to I talked to Jerry last Friday. Jerry told me he didn't want this deal. And now he's buying it from you. Yep, exactly. You you just didn't have the right perfume on, man. <laughs> but I still made that money. Okay. A worker is worthy of his money. Okay. So I found the buyer. Even though, yeah, you knew that guy. I don't care. I don't care. I'm the guy who got him to sign the line that is dotted. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Great questions, guys. Great stuff. Thanks, man. How else That's can we? Take. Yeah, absolutely. How else can we find JV partners? We're, we're talking about JV partners. How do we find JV partners? Um, how do we find JV partners? Prop stream. Prop stream. Prop stream. Well, we could find JV partners on prop stream. Maybe. Does anybody have ideas on how we could find JV partners on prop stream? Is Rick Gentry still in the room? And could he uh, 
could he elaborate sure, sure. on, on PropStream? Have they added that button that says that they that you can find wholesalers? Remember, they were they were talking about adding a button at one time where you could find wholesalers. Haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet either. So it might be uh, that uh, PropStream is not the best way to find JV wholesalers. Now, what we did say before was, is we said, uh, we said Facebook groups, right? We know they're in there. You should join, you should join these groups in the areas you want to be a part of and do deals in. Okay. Um, Craigslist. We showed that. Go ahead, Debbie. I was just going to ask if we could talk for just a minute about what to say in those Facebook groups when you go in. I mean, I know we've talked about it before, but I thought it might be good to. Yeah, I don't, I don't really go in there and post for JV partners, but what, what I will do is I'll go in and find where they posted a property deal. Okay. And, cool. and then I'll inquire about it. Okay. If it looks like something that I can work with, I'll inquire about it. And, and you can pick up, you can pick up several deals a day doing that. Okay. <laughs> you know, so I'm not posting in the Facebook groups. I'm looking where other people have posted in the Facebook groups. That's a great point, okay. Debbie. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. I know it goes, but can go both ways. Sure. Sure. And if Google. anyone in the Google, okay. If anybody in here has a good post for, for Facebook for generating JV partners, uh, share it with us in the club and we'll, we'll all use it. <laughs> Google. Yeah. You can Google real estate wholesalers, Kansas city, and you'll find, you'll find me. I'll pop up. They'll, yeah, they'll Google, be so Google, we buy houses in any city and a whole bunch of wholesalers will pop up. There you go. Google, we buy houses. Yeah. That's, that's great. Let me go ahead here, add that, Google We Buy Houses. Craigslist, yep. Now we showed the Craigslist one. How else can we find some good JV partners? Well, how about this? Local RIA meetings. Investor Deal Pro, we signed up for that last night. Hmm. Okay. That's right. We're going to see that. Local REI meetings. Okay. What about some other ways? How about this one? How can we locate wholesalers on automated REI? How about text blasting them? Yep. How about how about finding how about pulling up what we just showed you on Craigslist, okay? Taking that taking that browser link, plugging it into automated REI and text blasting all the wholesalers and just going from market to market to market to market to market to market being nationwide like Keegley. I'm just I'm just curious. Anybody got thoughts on that? Is that doable, Michael Batista? Oh, easily. Easily. Can you create a video on that one, Michael? Yeah. Yeah, we can create a video on that. That's not a problem. What we would, uh, what we would essentially do is pull or scrape all of the lists from that real estate wanted section, just as we showed earlier. And once we scrape that, we would send out a text message, a text blast. Uh, Justin and I worked up a, a good message last night. Um, Justin, if you want to throw that in the in the chat box, that what, would be great. What, uh, go ahead and I'll have to look it up if you want me to use the word for word version. But can, yeah. let's just recreate it right here. Um, okay. Or I can. Or I. Yeah. Let me um, let me just grab it real quick because I had that. Uh, I had it written out. It was it was pretty good. Okay. Yep. Great. So, so, yeah. So here's here's what it is, uh, and I'll just read it. But uh, I just spoke with a couple of my buyers, and they're looking for their next deal. Do you have anything in your inventory you'd be open to JV on? Okay. I'm gonna try to write that down right here on the screen. 
I'm going to put it in the chat box here. I just talked. What? Say it again. Yep. I'm pasting it right now. Give me one sec. I just I just spoke with a couple of my buyers. Okay. And they're Copy looking for the, from the um, comments. Yep, and, and and they're looking for their next deal. Okay. Do you have anything in your inventory you'd be open to JV on? Okay. I like it. And that's like, what, 134 characters or something? Yep. So it'll go out in one single text? Absolutely. All right. That's excellent, excellent, excellent way to, to go about doing it. So there, there's a there's a way to, to find JV partners. Pick one, right? Or pick a few and, and, and activate several of them at once. Right. Um, build out that disposition side. Then do this. Hey, Justin, I'm not quite I'm not quite tracking on how you're going to uh, use automated REI as far as taking that link from Craigslist. You're saying taking yeah. the I'm not tracking on the technicalities of it. Where yeah. you, where does that link go in automated REI? Okay, yeah, I'll show you real quickly. Um, so so there'll be no no questions in anybody's mind um, how that works. Let me go right here to, to the Kansas City Craigslist. This is where the wholesalers are, where we went to the wanted real estate section right here at the top. And we, we chose wanted real estate. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna highlight the address up here in the browser. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit Control C and that's gonna copy it to my clipboard. I could also right click it and go down here to copy. Okay, so once I do that, I can go to the automatedrei.com and sign in and I'll show you where this would go. Okay, so I'm gonna go to scraping and list, Craigslist scraping. Okay. You see where it says campaign name, test VIP today. And then right underneath that, it says request type, submit Craigslist URL manually or default scraping. It's manually uh, checkable here. It's automatically defaults to the default scraping, but I can check the submit Craigslist URL and then I can hit control V or right click and paste. Okay. And put that right there. Okay. Now what that'll do is that'll shorten all of the form for me and I can hit create campaign or check date account, okay, and do my business. And it'll pull that page right there, that one right there. That's it, nothing else, okay? So that's how you manually set up automated REI to text blast these these wholesalers, okay? Or here, here, here's, here's a thought, you could, you could do this with anything, not just wholesalers though, okay? One thing uh, can I point out? Uh, there's a duplicate bundles, bundling duplicates on the side. You can also check mark that and it will t take out all the doubling. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah remove the duplicates. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Remove those. And then um, as far as setting up keywords, um, you can in the actual browser in the box, on Craigslist. Do you know how to do that, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can take out certain keywords or, or, or add in certain things. Um, if you want to demonstrate that. Okay. Like that minus yep. property manager. Okay. Plus um, fixer uppers. Okay. Uh, this is, I, I, I'm, I'm doing filters now manually, but doing them in a search bar with the minuses or the pluses. Here's one I like to do, minus realtor, okay? I like to do minus realty, okay? I like to do minus broker, okay? <laughs> that way I'm not calling realtors and brokers. 
All right. What about management? <laughs> now, just because I type, yeah, that too. Let's do minus management. Okay. Um, let's say we wanted to do a uh, handyman special. Okay. We can add that with a plus. Now I have to hit the, the search bar here. Okay. Now, obviously I have so many filters in here. It has filtered out everything. All right. So let's just try one and see what happens. There we go. One filter brings us down to two. Only two ads have handyman special in it. Now I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to highlight and copy that browser link. Come over here to Automated REI at the Craigslist scraping side of their module, the, the module of their platform. And then I'm going to hit and paste and paste it right in there. Okay. So now I'm going to hit that list. Just that one. Just that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So great way to use Automated REI to locate wholesalers. Great way to do it or anything else you may be looking for too, okay? If, if your complaint of automated REI, if you've come this far with us, is that you don't have the ability to niche it down the way you want because of the way the platform interacts with Craigslist, this is the solution. Go into Craigslist, doing the search bar the, that way, finding the exact search that you want grabbing that browser link, going over there, plugging it in, boom, it'll pull them, it'll rip them right off of there, shoot a text blast out, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. So Mike, next question, does that save the link, say fences, you do a, a Zillow scrape and you put it in the in the URL, does it stay there or you have to keep doing this process over again? Uh, well, it'll only work for one scrape. So you'll have to reload it every time you do another scrape. You know, okay. um, and, and you'll want to anyway, because you'll probably want to search a different, you'll have a different search that you're doing. And so I, it, it'll all be separate. You'll have to do them separately. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, what I think what you're asking is, is could you set it up where it would just routinely do this for you automatically and keep you abreast of any new ones that pop up meeting those filters? Is that what you're asking? Right. Yeah. Not yet, guys. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Good question, though. So you just got to keep it on a notepad somewhere. Just copy and paste it in when you want to do it. Just put it in that way. I got you. Got you. Justin, there's an app. Say it again, Aisha. There's an app that does it. It does scraping in the background for you on a daily basis. Okay. What's that called? I have no idea. I forgot. <laughs> but I used to do it on a regular basis. Okay. All right. But okay. when I find out, I'll post it in the VIP section. And secondly, I posted a whole um, how to do the filtering thing on the VIP page for Craigslist. Yeah. If you remember. I do. Um, you want to refresh that and, and put it back up to the top so we can yeah. find that too? That I'll, I, I'll do it. I think uh, Mitch Roy or whatever his name was, he asked uh -huh. for it. And then I put it up for him. I uh, Step by step. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was that was a bit that was a bit ago. That was a bit yeah. ago. Okay, so let's talk about how to find uh, not JV partners with deals, but how to find these, how to find tenant buyers and cash buyers. Okay, we've talked about how to find JV partners with deals. So how do we find cash buyers and tenant buyers? I have a process, okay? I have a process. Let's. What are some ideas on how we could find tenant buyers and buyers, cash buyers for ugly house deals? Anybody? Let's let's throw out some ideas. You guys got ideas? I know you got ideas. You have to unmute your microphone. Why is everybody clamming up now all of a sudden? Real uh, estate agents. What is it? Real estate agents. They got buyers. Okay. Can you text blast real estate agents on Zillow uh, on automated REI? <clears throat> it's a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I would recommend cold calling those um, on the actual Zillow data or sending them, a, sending them an email. 
I mean, you could text them as well, but um, anytime that you're having a communication like that with, with a buyer or something, I would, would more so be more personalized. But again, that's up to you guys. Right. So you could actually go and scrape and get a lot of realtors off of automated REI and then manually call like what he's suggesting. Sure. <clears throat> What's another idea how we could get uh, buyers, buyers, cash buyers and tenant buyers. Facebook marketplace that you said also. I heard Facebook marketplace and then Debbie said something else. Just wondering if the agents are on Craigslist as well. Craigslist. There are way too many of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And property managers. Right. Those that always come up in your other scrapes that you don't want. <laughs> I, I recommend listing your property deal there for sale by owner and for rent by owner. If it's a if it's a a pretty house deal, a lease option deal, that can go in both sections. I'm just I'm if guessing it's a, if it's an ugly house deal, it's just going to go in the for sale by owner section. And there's fewer agents in that section though. <clears throat> but list your property there. I get a lot of buyers off Craigslist. Mag, what you got? I'm guessing if we find the realtor, we're going to have to split some profit with them, right? If, because they're gonna find a buyer oh, for us. Well, yeah, but but we're joint venturing here, so we're we're yeah, so we're we're probably gonna have a little bit of a daisy chain going there. So you know, I I prefer finding my own buyer before asking a realtor. I'll show you. I'll tell you my process here in a moment. But mm -hmm. let, let's let's exhaust all the ways that we could that we can think of of finding buyers and tenant buyers, cash buyers or tenant buyers. Prop Anything stream. Else? Prop stream is a great way to find. Uh, tenant buyer or not tenant buyers, but cash buyers, lenders and hard money lenders. Sorry, I'll shut up now. <laughs> lenders, okay. Do lenders and realtors both not have an inexhaustible amount of people who don't qualify? D do they not all know a handful of them at least? Every day. Yep, absolutely. Okay, lend home mortgage lenders and realtors both have the same problem. Yeah, well, this person wants to buy a house. Oh, th that's not the problem. The want to is not the issue. It's getting the money. They don't qualify. So what does that turn them into? A great prospect for them to make money, referring them to you to do a creative deal. Okay. All right. I'm going to a great way to, to make good relations with them. Yep. I'm going to include a referral agreement that you can use with your realtors in this package too. When I put it in the, in the group uh, today with the, with the agreements and everything, give you some gold nuggets that you can, you can save. You can some shiny objects you can put in your, your war chest over here and just admire them and sit in that rocking chair, just rock back and forth. Think about all that money. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other ideas? Any other ideas? Okay. Facebook Let me. Ads. Facebook, ads. Facebook ads. Yeah. Definitely. Paid ads in yep. the zip code of the subject property. Yep. How about landlords? I'm going to include a video uh, that we just recently did where I showed the Facebook ads too. So you guys can watch me build that ad again if you want. I'll I'll throw that in the folder. So, uh, what was that again? Was that Rick? Yeah, what do you think about landlords? Yeah, they didn't know, right? Tell me more. Oh, they're property owners. Like even if you do a landlord search, like houses or apartment for rent on like something like Craigslist, you know, they're, they're turning people down or they get, you know, more applicants than they need. They may have an abundance of potential buyers or tenant buyers that they just don't have the housing to fulfill. There you go. There you go.
This source. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I like that. This source. Okay. What What, what about another or one? Maybe sometimes if they can't find a tenant, it, they could like to work with you, you know, to help get somebody in their house. There you go. I've called I've called uh, landlords and said, "Hey, you got this house for rent." Would you consider selling it? I've got a I've got a tenant buyer I could bring, and could we share the money? And I've had them say yes, believe it or not. Absolutely, all in a day. One day I tried to prove to myself that I could do this in a day, and I was willing to do whatever it took. And so I I got a list of for rent houses in my area. And I just call, started calling them one right after another. Yeah, I think I could bring a tenant buyer. This house is already for rent. Would you consider selling it? If I bring the tenant buyer, I'll make them pay me. Okay, and what do you got to have? All right, so I just put the deal together. I just talked to them, worked with them. I found one in North Kansas City that day that said, yeah, I would do this. So I went right up there, and you know what I did? I found a nice uh, Hispanic family. They moved right in there. I collected a nice big check. It was cash, actually. They wanted to pay cash, which is <laughs> so. <Yep>. <laughs> landlords, yeah, that's a way to get deals. It's a way to find uh, tenants too. I'd say, yeah, sure. Property One managers. Of the way say it again property managers okay you know they fit fit within that landlord space but uh probably even have more of a you know more of an expansion because they're working with multiple properties they see a lot more applicants um or you could even say look you know i've got a property deal do you have a buyer yeah yeah you know pay you you know pay you uh 20% of the lease option fee or you know, whatever, whatever you recommend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, um, so let me, let me share screens with you here one more time um, and, and see if I can share the right stuff with you here. Here's a folder I want to share with you. I, I, I want to give you this spreadsheet as well. The spreadsheet will help you track your deals as you start adding JV partners. You're going to want to remember what, who and what you were doing. <laughs> okay. Cause you can like, if you get up to doing like Kegley 60, 80 deals a month, you're going to need a spreadsheet uh, of some kind. Uh, here's also um, along the lines of what we're talking about, how to find tenant buyers. Here's the process that I use. Okay. Uh, just follow this process. This is real simple. Me and my team, this is what my team has. This is what we follow. Just every every deal. It doesn't matter. There's no question about what we do. This is the process. Uh, the first thing we do is we'll, we'll mail out a email to our cash buyers list if it's an ugly house deal. Okay. And then if it's, if, if we don't sell it then, then what we'll do is we'll start at one. Okay. And we'll also do this. You can see this is for lease option deals. Okay. So this is we, same thing. Same process starts here at one. We put a Craigslist ad up in the marketplace, Craigslist market of the property deal. Okay. So if it's in Kansas city, we put it in Kansas city Craigslist. Okay. Whatever, wherever Craigslist is everywhere. We put the property ad up on Craigslist. We put a Facebook marketplace listing in the for rent section. Okay, if it's a lease option deal. Then <clears throat> we pay to boost that ad five bucks a day. Now the timing on this is day one. And Justin, what yeah. what what does that boost do? What does that boost do exactly in case people don't know? No, the boost the boost just gets me more exposure. It just it, it allows Facebook to put it out to more people instead of just my local community friends and family, um, you know, my local friends and stuff, uh, that's great. Um, but if I boost it, they're going to put it out there in front of more people that they feel like it would apply to. They get, they pick, they pick. And so it gets me more exposure <clears throat> in a word. That's the most important thing is exposure here. 
So day one, can I'll I put more. Can I put more money into that boost if I want. Can oh I go yeah, 10, 15, yeah. 20? Okay, twenty five, thirty. Yeah, anything you want. Okay. Um, five dollar is the minimum. Okay. So so day one, I'll put a Craigslist ad up and a Facebook Marketplace listing in the for rent section, which is free, by the way. Both of those, Craigslist and Facebook, are both Marketplace is free. Then after a day or two, if I don't get much traction, then I'll boost that Facebook marketplace ad for $5 a day. Okay. If I don't get any traction in the next day or two, then I'll go to Facebook and I'm going to include this video that we just did a week or two ago where we showed building a Facebook ad. We built a Facebook paid ad in the area of that property deal in the zip code. So only people in the zip code of that subject property will see it. Okay. And if I don't get any traction after a day or two of that, then I will go to rentlinks.com and I will post it there, which is a syndicator. Okay. It syndicates out to like 80 something different places, I think. Okay. So that's a way to really get a lot of exposure. So this is the process. I don't do five and then three and then two and then four. I always do one, two, three, four, five in that order. And sometimes it's a day or two in between. I'll, I'll see if I'm getting any results on what I'm doing and I'm see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm ramping up my marketing. Okay. All right. And I try not to judge my marketing until I've gotten, gotten it ramped up a little bit. And I also have uh, uh, gone through a weekend. Okay. Um, so, you know, weekends are big for people looking for houses to move into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a JV calling script, okay? If you want to find rent-to-own people, rent-to-own deals and call them, talk to them about JVing with you. Here's a script. I want to provide that for you, okay? And then, of course, here's the, the blank uh, JV agreement that you can use to start a relationship with a, with a joint venture partner. I'm going to include that as well. And a video on how to understand what that agreement is and how to fill it out. A question for you. On, on, uh, on those top five things that you're doing, do you track the phone numbers? Do you track any of the ads or do anything like that? To, to, as far as like, okay, I have, I have a phone number for Craigslist. I have a phone number for Facebook Marketplace. I have a phone number for Rent Links. Well, do you ever, next too. yeah, do you ever go through and track that? Is that, even come across your mind or uh, you just yeah. kind of consider it all digital online marketing? Uh, I used to consider it important and I had call rail and I had several numbers where I could designate each one for a different marketing ad or a different line of marketing. And I could tell what results were coming in. I discontinued use of that because I, I feel like, um, for the most part, when a Facebook ad is out there or Facebook Marketplace, I'm getting direct messages on Facebook Messenger or on the, the platform itself. And then when I'm on Craigslist, a lot of times I'm, I'm getting emails back or I'm getting a direct call, okay, which would be important then. But most of the time, I know the calls are coming in off Craigslist. So I already kind of know calls are coming in off Craigslist or texts. And DMs or direct messages in these uh, or these uh, Facebook messages, whatever they're called, those are usually you know. So I kind of already know, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and it and and I felt like call rail was kind of expensive and kind of unnecessary for me at at my stage of the the business. And you know, and so. I was going to mention that too. Less is more, especially when you're first starting out. You know, you're at one to three deals a month. Maybe you're not even doing a deal yet. Um, the fewer things that you have to worry about, the better, yeah. you know, maybe once, once you ramp, once you're consistently doing, I think I said three deals a month and then you want to go to five or 10, then yeah, maybe you can get a call rail or another tracking phone number type software. Right. Yeah. And, and, and go about it that way. That way you can really dial it in. But at this point, like if you're at, you know, less than three deals a month consistently, and you know you just want to keep your expenses low just go go about it that way that that's that's what i would do is don't even worry about that just treat it all as digital marketing online 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing the call rail with the divisions of the different phone numbers until you have multiple, multiple marketing uh, streams going like bandit signs, um, and then <laughs> postcards and then, you know, online stuff and radio on and on. You know, yeah. Because radio, then, then you'll yeah. want to know what's, what's bringing in results and what's not. Okay. But I, I'm such a keep it simple, stupid kind of guy. I mean, yeah. I've, I've got to keep it simple. I've got to keep it dirt cheap. Okay. I, I, I'm just that kind of guy. I'm just a tight ass. All right. And I like to just do things the most simple, easy, ridiculously stupid way because I get off on that. I don't know why <laughs> I just like it, you know? So uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. All right. But, but a great topic, great question too, Michael. Yeah. So other Michael. <laughs> What's up, other Michael? Hey, George, so, can I ask you a question? So in Michael. other words, Justin, you um, you text them first, then you call them from your phone or you have a the phone number in that area. Say, for instance, you in Kansas City, but you got a house in uh, New Mexico somewhere you, you're leasing, purchasing. So I have you, never, I've never found my local phone number exchange 816 if i'm going to rep kc mo it's the 816 like tech 9 okay <laughs> <laughs> oh lord <laughs> yo tech 9 it's tech 9 <laughs> okay uh i've never had it on the buyer side advertising a property deal i've never had the 816 i've never had it be a deterrent that i that i've ever recognized the people calling me saying hey i'm interested in that deal <laughs> okay um uh, pretty common that that it, it works out perfectly you know? okay. now on the seller side i've had them say what well, were you calling me from okay i've had that happen but not on this disposition stuff yeah you care so much yeah makes sense yeah any other questions about JVing and stuff? What happens next, guys? What happens next? What happens next? I recommend, if you don't know, that you go ahead and if you're if you're if you're brand new, you don't have a deal under your belt, keep practicing the the guts conversation. Keep practicing getting deals, but in the meantime, work on your disposition skills. How are you going to build an ad to sell a property deal? How do you make that? How do you how do you get that exposure to your property deals? Once you have some confidence with that, go grab three, four, five, 10, 12, 15 JV deals, fill the pipeline, stuff it full. You, you tell mama you got lots of stuff cooking, something's got to shake out, right? While you're practicing, getting better at making calls yourself, okay? Get some get some momentum. Use co-wholesaling and joint venturing to help propel you into your first deal or into your next deal if you're in a slump. Been there, done that. I'm telling you how I got out of it was I JV'd my ass out of it. Okay. If I'm not if I'm not doing very good on the phone, I can't get a I can't get a deal, and God knows I need one. I'm calling Michael. Michael Batista, hey man, you got any deals cooking right now I can find buyers for? I got buyers, man. No, you don't. Oh, but you talk to a guy who does. Cool. Connect us up. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to find a, I'm going to find a deal to sell somewhere. Right. Somebody's deals getting sold today. <laughs> it Justin, doesn't have to be mine. Justin. Yeah. Is it easier locally or virtually on that one? It is easy either way. Alefa is a VIP member. She did this JV thing, never did it before, took me at my word. She lives in San Diego, California, found some deals through a JV partner in the VIP club in Pueblo, Colorado, never been to it, never even doesn't know anything about Pueblo, put ads out there, found buyers, sold, sold like two or three deals for this guy. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. There it is. Then, then what she did was she went to realestatewholesalersclub.com and she ordered a bunch of these shut up money hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Any questions, guys? Anything else we can talk about, JV? I hope you learned something today. I'm going to put the link for the materials in the VIP room so you guys can access those and go through them in your leisure and add on the uh, on the JV agreement, Justin. Do we have to do anything or just send it the way it is? Any any changes, tweaks? No, not really. Just mm -hmm. very very simple. And there's a video explanation of how to go in there and fill it out. Uh, there's a video that I'm going to include in the materials. Uh, where you can watch it and just uh, get a good uh, experience of going through it and what it is and how it works and what you need to fill out and all that. It's just a couple lines. That's it. And then signatures. Real easy to do. So, so Justin, you said your best training on prop stream is on YouTube? Yes, sir. In the wholesalers, uh, tools and agreements playlist on YouTube. If you go to my channel and you go to the playlist and go to the wholesalers, tools and agreements, uh, there's where it's at. There's a bunch in there, man. There's a bunch in there on automated REI. There's a bunch in there on prop stream, uh, on how to get data and stuff. And then we're adding some now on, on investor deal pro cause it's brand new for us. Yes, and I thought when Burton was on that day, he had uh, showed us how to do bias. He just typed the address in of the property you have. And then it pulled the device from there. Yeah. I thought he did that when he showed us that day. Yeah, he was on. yeah, he did. And he even showed us how to go deeper than that and find the most right. active buyers. Yeah. So there's there's anything you want to know really about PropStream is on that YouTube playlist. That, that's the ninja stuff. I got one up there. I got one video that people just love to hate on me for. <laughs> I hmm. get I get bad comments all the time because I put too many pop-ups that said, come subscribe join me, love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. It was like every three seconds and people hate this. <laughs> <laughs> They're hating on me in the comments right now. <laughs> this is why you don't have any subscribers. You mm -hmm. suck. And I'm like, why are people so angry? I just want you to love me, love me, love me, love me. <laughs> Uh... No more questions.